Coming to you live from Brian Wynn Studios, it's Reaper Live! It's gonna be, it's gonna be good to see, because the, the video that we have, obviously, shows I a lot of the early days. I can't wait to see it. So, it, it, yeah. that, audio, that, that intro reminds me of that. Yeah. Hey everybody, it's Thursday night, it's Reaper Live, thanks for joining us. It's been a, a while since we've been on, but... Um, you know, we've missed everyone, and uh, you know, we appreciate everyone tuning in tonight to, uh, to check out what's going on. So I'm here with Dave and John. How's it going, guys? How's it going? Um, so, yeah, so obviously there's been, you know, it's been quite eventful around here. Um, I just want to jump right into just sort of uh, what's been going on. So, um, again, Dave, jump in if I've gotten something wrong here. But as many of you know, you know, Ed didn't make it to ReaperCon this year. He, he had... Uh, gone into the hospital in August and um, with a heart issue and which we didn't know at the time the 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 the, the long-term consequences or anything like that but unfortunately he he went to the heart the, the hospital in very serious condition um, with his heart and uh, luckily we, we thought you know by the time Reapercon ended he was he looked like he was on the road to recovery um, he yeah. was getting better um, so he stayed in the hospital through September through October um, and all the while, uh, he continued to improve. Um, I think the, uh, the outlook from the, the doctor seemed to be pretty positive, Dave, right? So, yeah, yeah, there um, was, yeah. Yeah. And so, he um, was, uh, he was in rehab. Yeah. Wasn't through going through rehab at, 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 at in Dallas at the hospital and, uh, guy came home finally, um, yeah. October 21st, 13th. 13th. Okay. October so 13th. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so the. The, the day after he got out of the hospital, what would he do? He came up to Reaper. <laughs> yes, Reaper he did. And, and made popcorn and uh, sat around and, and said hello to everyone. And, uh, you know, uh, he was, he, but you know what? Here's the thing. When, when he was, uh, even when he was in the hospital still, still going through rehab, when I would talk to him on the phone, even though he was, he was still very weak, he, his, his mind was sharp. He was back. He was, he sounded like regular old Ed. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't really notice the difference between, um, you know, pre Reapercon Ed and, and post Reapercon Ed. Um, and yeah, all he wanted to do was talk about work, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> yeah. uh, um, so, uh, so he got out of the hospital. He was, he went and lived at Dave's house, um, moved in with Dave. Dave took, has been, you know, was doing a good job taking care of him. Um, yep. and so, uh, um, he was recovering. 40 days. Yeah. So un unfortunately though, Dave, he, he injured his back. Is that correct? Yeah. The first night he was here, uh, he's never, ever, ever had back problems, but, uh, we rented a hospital bed so that it could be adjusted and mm -hmm. all that to help him. Cause he had severe mus muscle atrophy and, um, he threw out his back. Um, you know, it was like, you know, the old person, oh my gosh, my, you know, I can't move kind of thing. So yeah. he was, he was fighting that for, for, probably about 30 of the 40 days. Yeah. But uh, and, eventually we got him to a pain management doctor in East Dallas and he took the, the injections and that was actually working. Yeah. So, I remember he called me when he actually got his injections and he's like, Hey Ron. I was like, Hey Ed. He's like, how's it going? I'm like, good. How are you? He's like, I'm doing fine. I was like, yeah. those shots really, really yeah. did a number on him. But, but it, it worked. You yeah. know, uh, he was getting him out of bed and into the chair and then up to do rehab laps and all the things that we had to do that I was supposed to keep him going to build up his muscles and get him stronger, um, was a lot easier and he was getting a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, he'd he, he, mentally, he was, he was there. He was, he was, he was, he was, uh, just like the same old Ed, but unfortunately because of the, but because of the lack of physical therapy, Dave, um, he kind of remained weak, right? The, 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 the problem. Yeah. Uh, he was supposed to, uh, about February or March, uh, probably a heart transplant or a LVAD. Mm -hmm. And if no one knows what an LVAD is, that's what, uh, vice president Dick Cheney had. Yeah. A left ventricle assist device. Um, but to do that is a uh, open heart surgery. Yeah. And yeah. he was too weak. So that's what the rehab was for. Yeah. Yeah. So we so, needed to get him strong again. 
Yeah. And for, and unfortunately, the 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 week of Thanksgiving, um, he had developed an infection which had gone to his heart. Right, is one of his valves. A UTI. In his heart. Yeah, just a simple UTI. My dad gets them all the time, but yeah. um, this one, uh, this one apparently grew on his aorta heart valve, and, which is where the issue was. Yeah. Yeah. And so pretty much all your blood goes through the aorta. And mm-hmm. so it started spreading the infection everywhere. And so um, his organs started failing and uh, just became harder to breathe and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And so and then, uh, yeah, Thursday, uh, yeah, yeah, Thursday, we Thursday, to... uh, what had happened is, is that on Wednesday, uh, uh, what they yes. had decided is, is that they needed to, uh, they were going to try out the antibiotics and it was 48 hours. And in 48 hours, we would, we'd have a game plan. They had mm-hmm. already said that because of his weakened state, um, uh, there was like a 99% chance he wouldn't survive surgery or right. recover from surgery. Right. The, the thing is, is that when you have an infection on your, your heart valves, mm-hmm. uh, antibiotics will not cure it. The, the, Hey man. The only thing is um, open heart surgery and repl- valve replacement. Right. It so, is. you know, it's like 99%. So, um, but that's better than nothing. Sure. So we, we, uh, we waited. And then the next day, his blood got septic, um, too much of the uh, infection. Mm-hmm. And that immediately took... Uh, the operation off the table. They will not operate on you if your blood is septic right. and uh, his organs and everything else kept getting worse. So at that point, um, it was, uh, he'll either, his body will either get used to the antibiotics and they will stop mm-hmm. working or his organs will fail. Um, <laughs> and that was, that was the only choices. Yeah. Or we could take off. He was on blood, blood pressure support. He needed drugs to help him, uh, help keep his blood pressure up uh, or we could take him off that and let nature take its course. Yeah. And that was the hard decision, the grim decision that had to be made. And, yeah. um, and that happened on Thanksgiving day. And, yeah. um, so, uh, he was, he was in no pain, right, Dave? He was on, no. he, he was, he had the he good was, stuff, man. He's on fentanyl. <laughs> yeah, he was on fentanyl. He, he was not, he was not conscious. He was, he was uh, resting peacefully in his bed. Um, he, uh, you know, uh, we got up to the hospital and, uh, he was surrounded by his loved ones. He was, Dave and Vicki were there. Uh, Jeremy and Amy were there, Jeremy, his son and his wife, Amy. Um, I know that, uh, there were several people who had been there throughout the day. I know that father Johnson and Amanda Johnson who used to work here at Reaper. They were there. Yeah. Um, your good friend rain from high school was there. Um, uh, let's see, I think, uh, uh, uh Rod and Adriana, uh, yeah. showed up. Came yeah. by, um, mm-hmm. uh, you, yeah. And Adrian, Craig Adrian Barnett. Mm-hmm. Um, Craig is an old, old high school friend when Ed was yes. running around doing hot rods and stuff. So uh, John Walker from Yeah, John from showed Cab up. Yep. Boss. Yeah. Cindy, of course, and was Cindy. there. Cindy yep, was, was there. there. Cindy was there. So yeah, we were all we were all yeah. there. And so and he passed away peacefully around eight thirty, I think, on, on Thanksgiving evening. And uh but he was Nine surrounded o'clock. by yeah. Was it uh, he was surrounded by friends and loved ones? Um, yes. he died yeah. he he, he died peacefully. And, um, you know, I was grateful to be there. So, um, yeah. say something, John, <laughs> uh, it's, it's pretty tough. It's, it's a hard thing to, 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 to watch. It really is. So, um, but I'm glad I was there mm-hmm. for sure. <clears throat> um, and so, uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, um, it, it, it was really hard to watch, but, uh, you know, um, Dave and I talked, um, uh, yeah. you know, after that and Ed's wish, Ed, absolutely. Uh, if people are wondering, Ed, absolutely. Hey, Vicki, we can't hear. Um, uh, he would have wanted, right. he did want, not would have wanted, he did want Reaper to continue. You know, there's no way that okay. he wanted, uh, us to, to not continue, you know, the things, the things he's been working on for 30 years to stop. Mm -hmm. And so, um, we, we knew that, I know Ed wanted that. Uh, and, and that's, you know, we're going to continue. Yeah. Uh, 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 Go ahead. Ron and I have had extensive talks and, uh, um, 
about what Ed's, Ed's wishes or what Ed communicated to me, what he communicated to Ron, mm-hmm. where he wanted to to take the company and and the long term plans, and so we're we're implementing them. Yeah, yeah. Reaper's not going away. Uh, you know, if not not just for for Reaper's sake or our fans' sake, but for Ed's sake, we're we're gonna we're gonna keep pushing on. Um, you know, when I came on here in 1995 and, uh, Dave and, uh, Ed and Al, they, you know, they, they all took me under their wings and groomed me and, and have, I, I, was, to the day that Ed passed away, I was still learning, you know, from Ed. So not just, you know, how to, how to, um, to, to, to run a, a business or to, to help run a business, um, it, which I could never do by myself. Um, and you know, Dave, even Dave said, you know, the, none of us could do it by ourselves. It took the right. team of us to, to do this thing. It was really more Ed, Ron and myself as the team to hold things together, you know, kind of thing. I was more on the finance, making sure that we had money to do the stuff. Ed was the big picture person. Ron was the person that, that had the, the pulse on the industry or, or what was going on and what was really cool role playing and you know, all that sort of stuff. So as a team, the three of us, that's what it took to, to keep Reaper going. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a team. And, and that's what he wanted, and that's what we were going to continue to do. Um, yeah. Uh, Tazalanch, regrettably, um, while Ed was in the hospital, uh, Goose went to go <clears throat> live with his son, Jeremy, and then Goose passed away while he was in the hospital. So Wasn't uh, Goose having some kind of uh, organ issue, like... Kidneys? Kidneys, uh, kidneys. She she was like twenty years old, so yeah. yeah, she had kidney kidney problems. But she meant the world to Ed, and so we've had her uh, cremated, and so her ashes will be with Ed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, didn't didn't we say that? Um, did you say how old she was? The goose? She's she's yeah, been she's around twenty 19, years. 20? Yeah, it's about twenty years yeah. old. She's been around for a while. I've got mm-hmm. a great picture of. I wish I could have found it. A great picture of Goose uh, on my head. Um, when we first moved into this building here, uh, I wish I could find that. Um, but yeah, um, a lot of people have, uh, you know, and so people have been talking a lot of stories. Uh, we've had a lot of people share their experiences. You know, Dave, Dave wrote a, a really great, uh, obituary Dave. It was really good. And like you said, Dave, the, the one thing you wanted to sort of, uh, let everyone know if you didn't know Ed, if you never met Ed, because a lot of people haven't is what an optimist he was, what an eternal yeah. optimist he was, right? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Some, sometimes to a fault, right? So, um, <laughs> you know, like, hey, let's build this building. It'll be done in a month. Um, that's very optimistic, yeah, Ed. That's not know. exactly yeah. going to happen, right? But, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, he was always, always the ideas. optimistic. He was no the idea what. man. Yeah. yeah, very optimistic. I also love, Dave, in your obituary that um, all the all the hobbies, Ed. It, all right. I've, there's so many, there's so many things we could talk about, but when I first came on to, to Reaper, um, uh, and it, it came in and I was just in college. Right. And so I came in and, and, uh, the first time was at the old industrial, uh, uh, complex, uh, industrial, uh, what was it called, Dave? In, the, uh, the industri- industrial park in Louisville. Yeah. 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 Uh, we called it the sub shop. The sub you know, shop, because, yes. Because it, it, it Felt rained. Like Whenever sub- it rained, it leaked everywhere. <laughs> and you have molten metal and, you know, everything else. So it's it's a disaster waiting to happen. But. Yeah. I came in and uh, Ed showed showed me how, how, how a casting machine worked. I'd never seen a casting machine before. <laughs> and, he you know, he took the time and, and showed me how a casting machine worked. And I remember he had cast all these cool heritage figures that I had lost from from my youth, I had lost him, and he was like, "Yeah, these are cool, aren't they?" I was like, oh. "I was like, oh, that's the thing, and that's the." He's like, "Yeah, they're cool." Just threw them in the pot and melted them. I was like, "Oh, you <laughs> melted those figures!" Um, but I came, and so I, I took some figures home to paint, and then uh, by that time, Reaper had moved to the uh, the Smith Street shop in Louisville, and I brought back the yeah. painted figures. And what was really cool was that Ed he stopped working, and I he goes, "Sit down," and so I sat down right there in the, in the, in the office area of the Smith street shop. And he talked for me for about two hours and I was just some college kid painting, painting miniatures. And he talked for me for about two hours. Like we were old friends, you know, he was telling me about the, the miniatures industry and the gaming industry and, and, and just how miniatures are made and the whole process. And he just, he took the time and he, like I said, and it was so immediately comfortable to talk with him that it felt like there was a dude I'd known and, and hung out with yeah. my whole life. And that's, was, and that is actually the most common thing I keep, 
mm -hmm. seeing, reading, or hearing from people when I meet them is, is that it was like you guys had always been friends and we're just now catching up. Yeah, he was really good like that, Dave. He was he would always just just talk to people like he had known them. A good them. talker. And he was a great talker, and that's that's something that you know, um, it's Ed's. Ed is irreplaceable. He cannot be replaced. I mean, he was a, he was a unique soul, um, one of a kind. That you know, even though you know Reaper is going to continue and we're going to carry on, we we can't. We're not going to even try to replace Ed. You can't. It's just impossible. So we're just going to carry on what he wanted, what he had set out for the company to be, uh, and that's the best we can do. But to replace him or to try to you know fill his shoes or his role, it will never happen. I am and I. I personally, speaking of myself, I'm not going to try because I'm not Ed. I can't, can't be Ed because he was just such, um, he was a, a, a great communicator. He was very charismatic. He had that cult of personality that you just sort of felt warm and, and friendly when you immediately started talking to him, you know, and he was, you know, I call that Dave. And I don't know this, Dave, this is just my assumption that whenever I would he would sit down and talk to me with people from the bank would come by Reaper and talk, or if they would come by the, um, or if insurance people or anyone, other businesses, other people would come in and talk to Ed. I would always hear him talking, but he didn't just jump right into the talk. He, he would always go, and Dave, you do this too, but it was the, hey, how you, how's your family doing? How's your mom doing? How's your whatever doing? Your kid's still <laughs> yeah. in school. How's college yes. going? All these kind of things. He would always, and I always called that, just, this is just me, I called that his country club uh, politeness. And I think he got that from your mom, Dave. I don't, I don't know if y'all got that from your mom or not. Probably. Yeah. That, mom, <laughs> mom knew no strangers. You know. Yeah. And I always thought that she was just, that's where you, that he picked that up from is, uh, um, was, was, uh, was that way. And he was, all, but like real, I said, he was just always friendly. Real quick. Painterly get ask a question. Uh, yes, it is true. Ed coined the phrase heroic scale. That was mm -hmm. at a that was at a uh, trade show. Gamma. And we had these figures, and and they wanted to know what scale they were. And because mm -hmm. they were bigger than, say, the normal 25, if you looked at them. And Ed's like, well, they're like, I guess, you know, 28. Oh, well, I'd, uh, my people like 25. And they'd right. walk away. Mm -hmm. And uh, after a few incidents of this, Ed goes, well, I can't continue to say, well, they're 28 or something like that. Right. So then... Some guy came by, what scale? Oh, well, they're heroic scale, 25 millimeter. Oh, <laughs> and all of a sudden now it was okay to yeah, have these. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> Ed, yeah, Ed, that was Ed's phrase. And it's it, now it's just, we never trademarked it. We should have, but <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it's, it's out there. You know, I love it. I think it's perfect. Uh, matter of fact, I was on a, not to digress, but I was on a text thread the other day with uh, uh, Rhonda Bender and Jen Greenwald and Pro Michael Proctor and Bobby and G and Jason. And they'd sent a picture of, um, there was the classic picture of Wilt Chamberlain and, and Arnold Schwarzenegger and Grace Jones. And there's another picture they sent, uh, gosh, who was it the other day? Uh, oh, it was, it was uh, Yao Ming and Shaq and Kevin Hart. You know, all humans, all different sizes. So, and you think mm -hmm. Shaq's big, Yao Ming is a monster. Anyway, I digress, like I said. But yeah, heroic scale. I thought that's just genius. That was some genius stuff. So, Ed, and you know, Ed was... One of the smartest guys I've ever met. Um, you know, I always said that if I was ever on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, that on my lifelines, Ed would be one of my lifelines because he knows so much. Such a damn know-it-all. Um, the other two lifelines, by the way, are my dad and my father-in-law. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, Crows and Bones wants to know, Dave, what, is, what was Ed's favorite car? Camaro. There you go. Duh. Sony Camaro. <laughs> Duh. Both of us. Yeah, that's Duh. our favorite Duh. car. I mean, people sit around and they go, oh, look, there's a, there's a, a Corvette. Okay. You know, <laughs> yeah. just, it's just a Corvette, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he was really smart. And so that, and that's, you know, when Ed would come into work and he would go into every department and he'd always check in with everyone every morning. And mm -hmm. here's the thing. If the paint machine was busted, or if the packaging machine was busted, or if the card printer didn't work, or if Thomas, the injection machine, Ed was, he was such a mechanically minded individual that if, even if he couldn't fix it, he at least knew what was going on with the machine. You know, he knew how things work. That, That's Daryl's car that, that, background. That comes from his hot rod years. Uh, yeah. Was it Crows and Bones uh, 68 Camaro specifically? That's what he owned. He liked all the first gen, 67, 68, and 69. He has a uh, 73 Z28 
which is the second gen. He has a first gen 68 Z28. And uh, um, in one year, GM released a, a 2015 Z28. It was one year. Uh, but it was really meant for uh, autocross. And he was seriously considering uh, getting into autocross because drag racing can get uh, you get high speed problems happen. You have to have quick reactions and you can get hurt real bad. Whereas autocross, you never get above say 50 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour kind of thing. So it's a little bit safer, but, yeah. um, that's where the, the red Z 28 is. And so, uh, yeah, in fact, we, we talked a lot about, you know, what would we do if, if, if our time with Reaper came to an end, like, yeah, well, we just don't want to do this anymore. We'd open up like a Camaro shop restaurant restore them or work on them you know just something to pass the time yeah that's cool um you know uh and yeah you know, like i said ed would come in and check him with everyone and ed was a <coughs> he was a he was a great boss but he was an even better friend it's a lot quieter around there for sure <laughs> There's, there's, uh, there's, there's a lot quieter, but anyway, it was a great friend and he would, um, you know, talking about cars, you know, I got a Jeep and he would always offer like, Hey, do you want me to, you know, help you with your Jeep, do this or that or whether, but that was the good thing about uh, not the good thing. There were so many good things, but one of the, the best things about him was that you never had to ask him for help. He was always offering his help before you even got it out of your mouth. Yeah, he'd say like, yeah. "What's wrong?" Yeah, it's like, "Well, I'm having this problem," and he's like, "Oh, well, we'll 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 help you with that." Yep, he was intuitive like that, but he was always just he would he would give you the shirt off his back. He always told me, you know, if you ever break down anywhere, just call me, I'll I'll come get you, or if you're ever in jail, I'll come bail you out. And <laughs> luckily, neither one of those two things ever happened. I mean, yeah. word, but um, he was he was a great friend, um, always willing to help, even if you didn't ask for help, he would offer his help. You know. Years ago, the website or the webmaster, hey, out, out, the webmaster uh, kit, um, he, uh, he was with his family and down in South Texas. I know. And there we go. Um, his, his, uh, something happened. Somebody threw something out of a car and it literally disabled their van. And they were, hush. They were somewhere between Dallas, Fort Worth, and Houston. So uh, it <laughs> was looked... probably three hour drive there and mm -hmm. three hour drive back. And we got the call, and it was like around nine o'clock. So Ed called me up and said, You know, we got to go. We got to go get Kit. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, we got, we, we got in uh, the truck. Go on. And uh, drove down there, and what is it, noon? Yeah, I got back about 3 o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> Thanks, Ed. Thanks for dragging me out there. <laughs> to get back at 3 in the morning. It's a little adventure. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, um, there's a lot of things, uh, you know. I, there, I, we could all tell stories, I think, all day long. Um, you know, um, Ed didn't, the only enemies Ed had, I think, was the English language. Um, <laughs> you know, like, no, some... he really, whereas me and, and it's, you guys would, you could verify it. I'm more of like, you know, let's just take a gun and shoot him kind of attitude. And Ed's like, no, no, no. There'll I can be verify. time yes. later if you want to, let's not burn any bridges. It's like, you know, I can verify. Yeah. You, you go, you go ask dad for something and he's like, no. And then you go ask mom totally. And then they talk it out. Oh my gosh. Figure it out. That, so that was the analogy I was using with Adrian the other day. I was like, uh, uh, Dave and Ed are kind of like your mom and dad. Yeah. You know, you kind of can go to whichever parent depending on what you need <laughs> yeah, and you know, which one's going to say uh -huh. yes. And which one's going to say no. So like, you know, I'd go to Ed and like, and then they'll talk about it and meet in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. So, uh, it, it, hey, I talked to Dave. I talked to Ed. <laughs> uh, this, is what, this is what we're gonna do. Sorry, Dave. I, I don't want you to have to find out this way, but yeah, we we it's like mom and dad. It's like, well, we know mom will say no. Let's go talk to dad. <laughs> we know dad's gonna say let's go talk to mom. And mm -hmm. so you guys are kind of like the mom and dad of Reaper, in a weird kind of way. Um, but uh, yeah, um, uh, luckily if. Um, I never had to have Ed come pick me up because uh, that would have subjected me to his driving, uh, which um, so many people have, yeah. <laughs> have gotten to, got to experience 
over the last several years here at Reaper. That's always fun to hear people's uh, driving stories with Ed. I know Cindy's got some. Um, you just you just concentrate for him. You know, <laughs> yeah. He starts he starts talking and he, he just talking. keeps going straight. Yeah. You know, and and you have to say, okay, here's your exit. You yeah, know? yeah. It was a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I posted on social media the memorial stuff, and obviously, that's when everybody else found out. Yeah. Was the the day I think it was the day after, Friday. Mm-hmm. I think or Saturday. 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 Mm-hmm. And the monitoring all the social stuff on Twitter and Instagram and everything. There's a lot. There was a there's a lot. Um, and like I've only been here for twelve years, so, and for the first like six, five or six, I was just a caster. So I was like in the back casting and I didn't really like do a lot. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Because you're just casting. That's all. I just put my head down and I was just doing my work. You got you know? to be left alone and yeah. kind of do your, do your thing. Right. And so recently in the past couple of years, you know, I've been doing more. You guys mm-hmm. have been seeing me more and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, but I didn't realize like 30 years of Reaper and all that stuff. So you start like seeing all these stories about people in the industry and, you know, like, Yeah, you know. Th- I could do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like other big companies and, you know, he always helped other people. He did. Like yeah. other miniature companies, they're like, oh, Ed helped us get started and mm-hmm. he would always help us. That. All that stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was, it, like, you know, like we uh, like we said, he was, he was always very talkative and then, again, you know, if, like John just said, if another miniatures company came in and, and had questions, Ed would be glad to help out, you know? Uh, rising tide, you know, raises all ships. That kind of thing. Um, uh, helping people with with their, you could ask him anything. You know, he could tell you how to paint a mini. He could tell you how to make the paint. He could tell you how to make the mini. He could tell you anything. Um, and it's uh, it's it's one of those things that it it was just a, a unique soul that um, will never be forgotten and can never be replaced. Yeah, so. I told um, I told Reaper Harley many years ago. I think it was like three or four years ago at this point, because I've never been really close with my family. So whenever I had issues or I needed help, I would go to Ed or Dave like, hey, my car broke down. <laughs> I need help. So yep. they would always help me. Yeah. <laughs> so. Ed would have fixed himself if he could have. <laughs> probably. Like, <laughs> he hey, probably I would could put have. air in your tire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't yeah. know how to do that. Yeah. So. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. I know. Um. And the outpouring from the community has just been fantastic. Um, there's been so much on just, just, I mean, I haven't even looked at anything except for Facebook and so many, so many wonderful comments and so many wonderful stories from so many wonderful people in this industry, professionals, uh, uh, hobbyists, friends. Um, he, he touched so many people and, um, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm speaking for all of us, but, uh, you know, I know that we all appreciate it. I know that uh, uh, Jeremy and uh, Amy, and I, I know they really appreciate it too. They're not here. Um, Dave, I know that you you and Harley, Reaper Harley, uh, Vicky have been going through all these. I, I saw her, you know, harding and liking so many comments. There's so much to keep, keep track of. Um, but I know that uh, everyone here really appreciates all the outpouring of support you guys have shown us. And it shows us what a great... Um, community that we have so um yeah watching ann's first stream after she got back you know she talked about how she, ed liked to surround himself with people that were like alphas or that yeah, like to get strong things people. done mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh I, I could see that you know yeah going back in my mind and it's like oh yeah i can see that that explains a lot <laughs> and then you know she told a bunch of stories and then this week on the crow's nest they had a bunch of the artists on yeah, there yeah and so that was really nice. I was listening to it earlier today because I, I normally when it comes on, I'm driving home, so I don't get to like watch it. Yeah, I mean it's it's affected people all around the world, the world, not just America, but all around the world. Um, yeah, Reaper was a pretty big deal. <laughs> well, know. you know, and and, and, and person, and I, I also, you know, I know that we haven't brought up Victoria and Lamb, and I know that um, yes, she and Ed were uh, very close. Uh, she posted a really nice thing on Facebook, and um, it was it's really sad to read, but. Um, you know, I know that uh, Victoria, if you're watching, you know we we're we're you know we we send our condolences to you as well. Um, so uh, you know, it, it's just been tough. Justin, do you, I know you're kind of sitting in there? Did you uh, have anything you wanted to add or anything? Um, I had some stuff, yeah. 
But uh, I'll be honest, I don't know how the hell you guys are on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gotta, surprised Ron hasn't like cried a lot. I trust me. I'm over here choking I, I, it down. I, I, I could tell. I, and your I've, eyes are really watery. I'm, um, I'm a big crier. So I'm, I'm back here losing my shit. To be honest. <laughs> but yes. Uh, um. Yeah, Justin. You said you were gonna. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, real quick, Justin. Real quick. Uh, Cindy sent me a text, and she wanted me to to let everyone know that you guys have been of the the orders that have mm. been coming in since Thanksgiving and you've been leaving the, the order notes. Yeah, there's a lot. It has been a, a lot and they were saving them initially, but there were so many they couldn't save them all. <laughs> but uh uh on behalf of Cindy and the production team here at Reaper, she wanted to say thank you guys for all your support that, you, that you've been showing through um your uh uh internet orders. Yeah, everybody so, buying Ed sculpts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know why, but yeah, I'm of course. The, yeah, right? You're skewing the numbers here. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're doing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, it's it's been it's been really hard. It's been really hard. But um, you know, uh, Dave is was when Ed was sick these whole months, and when he was at his house. Dave was uh, an excellent caregiver, an excellent brother. Took care of Ed. Um, Justin, you got to, you said you're going to bring it in? Nope. Uh, oh, thank you, Ron. But, you're welcome, yeah. Dave. I am proud of you. Um, I don't um, know. I, don't, I can't remember a lot of Ed's old stories. Something's I know. It, it, I, I've been kind of going through the same thing, and I'm having a hard time. It, it's just really weird. There, it's, mm -hmm. But there have been 30 years of them, right? So, um, yeah. yeah. Well, I was, oh, go ahead. I'm. I'm so lucky. I'm, I feel, like I said, I'm very fortunate, very lucky that I was able to get to the hospital in time um, to say my goodbyes. And I did. And I was able to hold his hand and, um, and say what I wanted to say before it was too late. Um, so I'm always, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that I was able to do that, to be able to make it there in time. Um, yeah, his, his last words to me were, thank you, sir. You know, you know how he always said that. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Like at the end of a yep. conversation. Yep. yep. He was always, always, always said, always very respectful to people. All right. I'll see you later, sir. Uh, yeah. You know, the, his, his last words to me were, uh, this goddamn phone. <laughs> <laughs> we were, uh, <coughs> FaceTiming and I was FaceTiming with his fan because he yeah, was messing right. with his phone. Oh um, yeah. And I, uh, so, you know, we're at work and we're trying to keep our noses to the grindstone while before it, this all happened. And Ed said, I need you to come over to the house. And I'm, you know, in the middle of something, I was, and I was, I remember it going, damn it, I don't have time. I can't, I don't have time to do this. Yeah. I don't have time to go over there. I was like, okay, fine, I'll go. So I drove over to Dave's house and I sent, and I spent two hours with Ed in his room. And you know what? It was fantastic. We had a great conversation for about two hours on that Monday. And um, I said, we need to do this again next week. And he said, yeah. And so the following week, that Monday, I couldn't make it. It was something going on. I couldn't make it. And I said, okay, I'd, have to, I'd have to cancel. I need, to, I need to, to do this tomorrow. And so he goes, okay. So Tuesday, I went over there. And, of course, again, the same thing. I was like, oh, man, I don't have time today to do this. I said, but you know what? Just go. Just go. And so that was the Tuesday before he went to the hospital. And, again, we sat there for a couple of hours. Dave showed up, too. And we sat there in his room, and we talked. And, yeah. and he really looked forward to that. In fact, he's kind of disappointed that you weren't coming on Monday. on Monday. I said, well, yeah. you'll be here tomorrow. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, what he, we had, he really looked forward to those. Yeah. You know what? And we had another fantastic conversation for about two hours. And when I left, I thought this was, that was so good. It was, it was a good, good conversation. Um, we talked a lot of, it was a lot of work and stuff, but you know what, before we started talking, when he, even he was sitting in his chair and he was, he could tell he was mentally, he was, he was, he was, Clear, clear and weak. great and lucid and everything. But he was just, he looked tired. tired. But you know what the first thing he said is, how's Adrian doing? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he always asked me how Sarah's doing. And he said, um, he asked, you know, how are the kids doing? He always asked about us first. When he was yeah. the one who was But, uh, but well, uh, damn it, Ed. Um, <laughs> the, the point is, he was always thinking about other people. So, yeah. And he, always, and, and, he always found the, the, the good in other people, even though, like, 
like I said earlier, it says, why don't we just shoot them? And it's like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, and had I known then what I know now, I would have been over there every day. So. Yeah, it kind of happened kind of quick. Because I was like, oh, he's very, at home. He's getting better. Very he, uh, yeah, it was, he had a doctor's appointment that morning. And, and the doctor, his heart doctor wanted him to, he was retaining some water. So mm-hmm. they gave him different pills. And, and he did. He lost 10 pounds of water in about a week. And that's what the doctor wanted. So it's like, well, this is going to be a good visit, you know, mm-hmm. other than, than, you know, he's, he's just tired. And then when yeah. we made it to the, to the hospital, this hospital that he was at basically has an ER doctor's offices, ICU, just everything. And so, uh, when we made it there, the doctor said, you probably go to the, uh, ER and we'll run some tests. Something doesn't look right. And so uh, we did, and that's when, when it started at all. Yeah, but yeah, yeah the, there were no more doctor's appointments other than the you know routine every two weeks, one month checkup. I mean, mm-hmm. it was gold. Uh, we had gone through all these doctor's appointments and and everything else, and and so it's like, hey, your back's good. You no more doctor's appointments because that eats up so much time. Um, yeah, we're good to go, dude. You know, we're gonna kick this rehab in high gear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I, I think it kind of goes without saying, and, and so many people have been in, the, in this position. A lot of you people watching have, have been in similar situations. And, um, but, you know, if there's someone in your life that you care about, um, make sure you tell them. Don't miss the opportunity. Um, I recently was driving home from, um, I was out of state, I was driving back through East Texas back to Denton, and um, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna drive. I'm gonna drive right by my my hometown, of Wills Point in East Texas. What is that? I don't know. Uh, static. And uh, what's that static, Justin? Uh, there. Hold on. Hey, you fixed it. it. You it's fixed gone. it. Whatever you did. Okay. Yeah. And I was driving through East Texas, and I thought, I'm gonna stop by real quick and just say, I was already late. I said, I'm gonna stop by and see my mom and dad. And I thought, you know what, I'm already late. I'm just going to keep on going. Even though I'm going literally five minutes out of my way to do it, I got to get home. I, I'm, I'm really, really late. And I thought, you know what? You don't pass up an opportunity. Yeah. So. Yeah. This, this, when he came, when he got in the hospital in August, I would go down every day to spend at least an hour and a half or two hours with him. Even he'd started out on a ventilator. So he wasn't around. I'd just squeeze yeah. his hand and talk to him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'm glad, Dave, that you spent that time, you know. But it changed my outlook in as much mm-hmm. as from that point on, I would tell Vicky any day I can talk with Ed and talk with you, mm-hmm. right? Vicky Reaper Harley. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a good day. I don't care what the hell happened at the shop, uh, how many people cut you off in traffic, um, <laughs> you know, whatever. As long as I got to talk to Vicky and I got to talk to Ed, it was a good day. I sure. guarantee you it was a good day. Yep. And yep. I and I kept saying that. That's right. That's right. That's true. And again, if you know the people who are around you that you care about, make sure you tell them you love them every day. Because I'm gonna sound like a commercial here, but it's true. It's absolutely but true. But it's true. Oh, I mean, you know, sound. like uh uh we had a friend that Ed always used to talk about. Um, we both, we just loved him dearly. And, uh, there's probably a, a, a week doesn't go by that. I don't think about him. And Ed was the same way. His name was, uh, Joey Peacock. Um, his daughter plays on the Reaper fast pitch softball team that we sponsor. Mm. And, uh, after Joey's passing and it was just all of a sudden, cause it was a car accident. Mm-hmm. Um, I made sure Vicky and I talked and I made sure to always Get a kiss and a hug from Vicky before she left for work. Mm-hmm. Always. Mm-hmm. Yep. You just never know. And that's what old people say. You know, the young people are <laughs> like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Ten feet tall and bulletproof. Reaper Hardy, yeah. love you too. Um. All right. I'm going to go back to Justin and give him a chance to talk. <laughs> if he uh, wants yeah, yeah. to talk. I'm, try- I'm trying, yeah. <laughs> it's it's really difficult, as yeah. obviously you guys know. Um. So it's funny because... Uh, 
I think if I had to imagine one thing I would retire doing, because Dave talked about doing a Camaro shop stuff, right? Yeah. For me, it'll likely be owning a, uh, like a, like a, like a gunsmithing thing, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> No yeah. fair. Just can to mute his paper, mic that's when he sure. needs to. We can't mute our mics when he needs <laughs> yeah, to. Where's our mute button, Justin? No fair. <laughs> he, he, he did this with his head. <laughs> I'd love to, uh, as Eve called it, punch, make noise and punch paper, which is um, we'd go out to a gun range. Justin would come out with us, and uh, uh, Ed loved uh, shotguns, which is the, the clay pigeons mm-hmm. and trap. And just target practice. We were never big into the hunting, you know, or anything like that. We just like making noise and punching paper. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Making noise. Old DM twenty two. Uh, sorry to hear that. Our, our our thoughts are with you tonight. With your with you and your mom going to the CCU today. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Um, but uh, I mean, I spent several hours uh, building guns with Ed because Ed, you know, like you said, he's mechanically inclined, so naturally applies that to everything. Um. <laughs> I have to read a book on gunsmithing, and he just kind of knows it. Yeah, he yeah, just does it. Tinkers it, out. Uh-huh. it gets uh-huh. it. It's like uh-huh. he's a tinkerer. You know, I'll yeah. never, I'll never forget getting my first pin put in my uh, my AR lower when I put the kit together, and then taking over there, have him check it, and he's like, "Yeah, you left out these three pins." And I'm like, "Oh, because <laughs> um, my because <laughs> the safety switch spun all the way around. Uh, it's not supposed to do that." Um, but uh, it's just it was stuff like that, and I spent several hours building guns with Ed. And in fact, really honestly, I owe my enthusiasm, my my historical interest, and and really honestly, mm-hmm. how I will spend my later years. Um, to Ed, on sure. this case, he he took me shooting one like shortly after I started working here, like six months. I'd only been here six months to a year. I went with him and Gus, and uh, he brought that that one gun that uh, that I had I've already mentioned it to Dave, and that was the <laughs> first thing I had ever fired, and it was like. It was, it was, that was the love at first sight moment. And <laughs> I could tell, I mean, Ed knew too. And it was like, yep, that's the bug. So yeah. Cause you, you never really talked about guns when we were younger. Nope. And then Did not care. And know. then ever since that day, it's like, that's kind of like your thing. It's it like is your, your it's, hobby. It's, it's my thing. It really is. It's, it's that and video all, games, but for the most part it's that. So. And it all started when, uh, an old friend was selling off, uh, some of his granddad's stuff. And Ed bought a German Mauser from World War II. And just, yeah, let's go out to the gun range and shoot this Mauser. And so we did, and we had fun. And so then it's like, well, if you got the German World War II, I guess I'm going to go get a Japanese. So I went and got a, a oh. Japanese seven point, type 7.7 rifle. Um, I didn't know that. And I know why the Japanese lost. That rifle was still in <laughs> stock shape. Okay. And the trigger... The, fired, tr- <laughs> the trigger had a 22 pound pull on it Jesus. and normal is like four pounds, you know, it's a light trigger is four pounds. So yeah, I mean, you got to push 22 pounds against it to, to, <laughs> to get it to shoot, to get it to shoot. But anyway, so Ed had his German Mauser and I had my Japanese rifle and we'd just go out to the target <laughs> range and just bolt, fire, bolt and fire. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. We, t- we took a lot of, we, we spent <laughs> several trips to the range, several Several hours spent in his in his shop just building stuff and reloading and stuff too and and mm-hmm. he um God, every time we went out there was a new gun he brought something new and it was always something like I can't tell you how many times I said wow you have one of those and then I got to shoot it and he, it was it was just it was it was always epic and uh, you know and that's probably one of those big regret things where we went back in the summer when the Australians were here earlier this year oh yeah and uh, you know we God. We, I had some issues with some stuff as always. And, you know, we were working, it was really cold too. And we, we, we cut it short cause it was so damn cold. And we, uh, we finally, we, we got in the, uh, the truck and we left and I was like, yeah, we'll have to come back. Cause he had brought a couple of new things. He's like, well, we'll shoot those next time. Well, you know, it's as things go, things, uh, things we didn't get to, but, uh, it's, there was always his, his collection was never ending. And there was, there was just always stuff where I'm like, we got to take that out next Ed. We have to. And, uh, and I was telling, I was telling Jeremy and Dave this funny story where he actually, he, we, he and I went to a gun show, I think back in, um, July, I think it was, um, down in Fort Worth. And, uh, 
he he ended up impulsively because he bought a lot of guns impulsively. Um, he ended up impulsively picking up this. Uh, I think it's a Smith and Wesson, like side by side. It's a space looking shotgun. And let me tell you, he picked it up because he thought it would have uh, it would shoot mini shells, um, which are smaller shotgun shells, less recoil. They're more fun to shoot, really. And uh, <laughs> turns turns out it wouldn't shoot mini shells. And uh, <laughs> and then he uh, it would. <laughs> let alone shoot regular shells. It wouldn't shoot regular shells either. It was uh, the biggest piece of shit. <laughs> it was so, so angry at that damn shotgun. He was like, he's like, this is why I don't impulsively buy shotguns. Yeah. And uh, God, that was, uh, that was, I should have videoed that. That was hilarious. He was mad so at the time, a, but he laughed about it later. But, I got an old yeah. acid story for you. The, uh, uh, there was uh, programmers and there was some game I don't know all the particulars of the game, but it was some shooter, first person shooter. And in this particular game, the programmers didn't know really anything about the guns that they were mm. programming for. And so uh, they, uh, in the game, literally what would happen is, is you would shoot and then you'd take the, the, the scope and the sighting and kind of play with it. And then you'd go back and shoot. And that's just something that they programmed in there. And it's like, mm. You don't do that. Once you get your scope set up, you know, you leave it. You uh -huh. don't keep adjusting it every time. <laughs> and uh, so, Ed, Ed, they came down because they were also miniature fans. And, and Ed took them out to the gun range with some of his toys. And, and okay, well, like, this is what you've programmed for, you know. This is what you're having them move. And, and you know, you don't want them to, once you got it set, you keep it. And then there was another gun that they had. That he goes, okay, so when you load the magazine, you want to pop it on the bottom. Because if you don't, it, it doesn't, sometimes it will not seat correctly just by putting the clip in. And uh, what will happen if you don't have it seated correctly <clears throat> is it will fire one round and then the magazine will drop out. And so I guess to, to see if Ed was telling the truth or something, one of these programmers <laughs> did that. He just put it in there and then fired. And sure enough, the magazine just came right out. <laughs> so they changed their program after that to not constantly adjust the scopes and, and to, to pop the, the magazine. Dude, see, always helping other people. I know yeah, it. See. Always helping. Hey, by yeah. the way, we'd be remiss if we did not say that uh, our very own Cindy Lindahl, our production director, mm -hmm got her job here at Reaper because Ed met her husband, Larry, at the shooting range, right? Correct. And, and that's how Cindy yes. got hooked up skeet, with Reaper. Skeet shooting, I think, right? Am I wrong about that? So, uh, well, Ed, Ed definitely preferred, like, his his favorite weapons by far were his shotguns, to mm -hmm. Dave's point. Like, those were, yes. everything else was kind of really negotiable, honestly. They were really genuinely were toys. So, like, I never saw him get angry over a rifle. I saw him get angry over that shotgun. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, the rifle is like ah, screw the, it. The skeet in the trap, and he spent a lot of time practicing and doing that. Right, that's true. Yeah, and he was easy to troll because he would always he would because well, he trolled because he trolled back. Yeah. Yes. Oh gosh. And it, but it made it lighthearted, and you know, you know, it's like dude, he was quick and it could come up with an insult <laughs> or a comeback, <laughs> uh, really, really quickly. He yeah. was he was sharp as a tack. Kind of loose with his words sometimes. Uh, yeah, he. <laughs> That's a nice way of saying it. <laughs> that is a nice way to put it, I agree. Uh, he did have a way with words, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm going to miss a lot of that, for sure. That, yeah, that Paladin uh, 65. Yeah, Ed's uh, early. Before Reaper, when we would play games, miniature games, a lot of it was uh, Napoleonics. And Ed loved playing the French. And, um, yeah, the French. And he had some Austrians. And I usually played the British. So when we would have, go against each other, it was like, you know, the, the typical French-English kind of Napoleonic battle. We what? got into 15 millimeter, 5 millimeter. I often told Ed that that was his biggest flaw is his love of Napoleonics. <laughs> um, <laughs> what did he play in Age of Empires? What did he primarily play in Age? Goth. Oh, he loved the Goth because of that quick. You, you played the build. British too, right, Dave? Yeah. But yeah. he loved the Goth. I play the Brits. That's what I thought. But yeah. in Age of Empires, yeah, he he would. Uh, that was our typical. That was our night when it was kind of like uh, Reaper Harley had worked all week and <laughs> and she had some nights off. It was let's go kill something. And so yeah. Ed would come over and we would all <laughs> get on a game of Age of Empires, and it would be Reaper Harley, Ed, and myself versus um, three computer players or four mm -hmm. computer players. It just depends on how hard we wanted to make it. 
Yeah. Sometimes we had five. And, um, you know, sometimes we lost. Most of the time we won, but it was always, there was always that moment of like, I'm not really sure we're going to make it past this tonight. <laughs> you know, uh, and of course, me, well, why don't we just shoot them? It would just make me mad. I mean, it would, <laughs> there was no time to restart again and, and, and win a game. So it was like, okay, well, you know, got to go to bed and stuff. And I'd be mad. I would yeah. be mad going to bed. <laughs> like that's a waste of an hour and a half. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. But, um, but uh, I actually yeah. have a funny story for that. Too. Hold, hold on. Real quick, Paladin 65 Grand Oracle. Oh. I'm just kidding, Rob. You guys do your historical oh. thing. I'm I just kidding. <laughs> uh, there was actually, this was not that long ago. This was within the last, I think, six months to a year. I remember, Ed, um, we were talking about Age of Empires not that long ago. I think it was when 3 came out. And he was talking to me about how, 4, when 4 came out, sorry. Um, he was talking to me about how when you guys play, uh, he he goes well. I I'd never say this to I'd never say this to Vicky, but every time I look over there, she's doing nothing but making trebuchet. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she, he's like, <laughs> yeah. And we all took specialties. Like Ed's Ed's big thing was, uh, tell me if this doesn't sound typical. Ed's big thing was creating the Goth army, the troops, the foot troops, and Vicky was more of the uh, the trebuchet queen. I like mean, you know, it's kind of like, okay, we've got this under control, but now we've got towers and we've got all this stuff. And here come Vicky with, with all of her trebuchets. <laughs> and, and I was more the economic person. It was kind of like, okay, who needs resources? <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, well, I need that. Okay, here you go. Oh, here you go. So you know. appropriate. Yeah. That's so appropriate. Yeah. He, I, oh I remember God. he would always talk to me about, and I would always ask him about, like, he would, he would talk about World of Tanks and, like, how they yeah. control people. And mm -hmm. I think he said something about the, they were playing the Star Wars. You guys were playing the Star Wars. MMO at one point and just talking about trolling galaxies. People. Yeah. Yes. Years just, ago. Just yes. Trolling. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Ed and I played uh, the lost Republic or the, the old Republic for a while, but uh, that was, that was really in our opinion, lame compared to galaxies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Galaxies oh, yeah. is where cab boss, John Walker and he uh, with the KTD clan uh, used to go out and just, just, was merciless Dude, against the empire. I bet John, uh, yeah, you and John could probably tell us a ton of those Star Wars stories where y'all were just online, just yeah, rolling yeah, in galaxies, constantly. yeah, yes, shouting and oh my <laughs> gosh, oh, so many funny stories. Um, I, 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 I've spent many nights over at uh, Ed's house in Louisville uh, when Dave would come over and Scott and Jeremy and Ed and I we would uh. play Diablo. Oh. And well, we and on the network oh, that was so much fun. Yeah, that was parties. the first. Yeah. yeah, it was one of my the first time I'd ever done that. It was so much fun. This is like 1995, um, 1996. <laughs> it was a long time ago. So that Reaper was a blast. Harley wants Dave. wants me to tell the story of how I was following Ed. That was um, that was in uh, Lord of the Rings online game, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and we had horses and we were we were going somewhere, and so to save time instead of just you know. Keep oh, going, yeah. keep going, keep uh -huh. going. You could actually right click on someone and just say follow. Follow, yeah. And right, and so now you could just sit there and talk, or just you know <laughs> let them be the leader. And um, Ed got busy, like you know, if you've driven with Ed, you know, you you have to direct him. And uh, literally, he went through some bushes, and uh, uh, the other side was a cliff. <laughs> and, and so Ed went off the cliff, and it was like, wait, something's wrong. And so I turn around on my screen and I'm following him. So I go off the cliff. <laughs> and so the big, the big laugh was, this is like, well, we've now got the, uh, we've now got the answer. You know, if everybody in the neighborhood say went off the cliff, would you? And oh well, yeah. yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know? That's funny. Yeah. So many games. Uh, he did. Yeah. Someone did old DM asked about Quake. I mean, y'all played Doom. Y'all yeah. played Quake. All the all those old games. You played so many computer games over the years. As long as yeah, uh, if the game had some aspect that we could all three or or both of it, it's always fun when you team up with people against the computer. Ed had fun doing team versus team or P uh, uh, PVP, player versus player. But it was always it was a lot of fun just to just to kick back, to Duke Nukem, out. yeah, and just take three and just go against the computer kind of thing. Mm -hmm. funny <clears throat> nomad zeke that's a funny thing if ed jumped off a bridge would you do it apparently that was one of my things i was going to say was about ed's enthusiasm his infectious enthusiasm mm -hmm. that i used to say this back in the day that you know if he said hey we're gonna go jump off a, a, a cliff today let's go I, I would be like okay let's go he's like this is gonna <laughs> be good go. for reaper yeah. i was like let's go let's go do it yeah that sounds awesome let's go jump off a cliff 
Um, very funny. Oh yeah, well, the raining of tanks. Yeah, cab boss. We were tanks. we were on with cab boss in uh, in uh, world, of, world of tanks, and they have these they have these little tanks that are extremely fast, extremely, and so literally one time it was kind of like you know in world of tanks you have like 14 on each side and you start maneuvering the heavy tanks move slow but they're your fast little scout tanks go out there and supposed to find the enemy and we're like ah let's go have fun so uh cab boss ed and i we get on our little tanks and uh there's this burned out bridge or this broken bridge and so literally uh I forget, I think maybe Ed, he got like this running start and he tried to evil can evil the bridge and uh, didn't quite make it. And so and this is like, well, I can. And so then, uh, or John, uh, uh, cab boss did. And then finally, you know, the third one, the final one, uh, and we all tried it. And literally, we, none of us made it. So he kept, well, it just turns out that some player is down there in his tank and he's underneath the bridge, right? Trying mm-hmm. to sneak up on the enemy. And all of a sudden, these tanks just keep falling down <laughs> and it's like, it's raining tanks. What the hell? <laughs> Trash Rama. Uh, I need to know who's going to be, who's going to test all the goodie candy. bag candy, to make sure it isn't poison now. Trust me. That's in good hands. That is Ed's chore that I've taken up um, <laughs> and made sure that all that candy is good. So yeah, don't have to worry about that. The ghoulie bag and Christmas sampler candy is perfect. <laughs> I'm not the only one. Um, I just want to mention before we forget, but this weekend, if you haven't seen on the memorial page on the front page of our website, uh, we have, I think Justin, yeah, there it is. So the, the funeral services, I think, or the wake or <coughs> the funeral, services. funeral services yeah, are, are this Saturday, the December yeah. 10th at the Greenwood Chapel at noon. Um, I think Ron has requested that everybody, if, if anybody's local, that is going to be there that to try to wear a Reaper shirt. or it, Like Dave said, if you wish. If we, you wish. We, yes. The Reaper yeah. crew will be sporting Reaper shirts in honor of Ed. Uh, you know, I know that Ed right now would be going, don't dress up. Wear your Reaper shirt. That, I, mean, I think yeah. he would really get a kick out of that. So, um, yeah, we're going to be sporting our Reaper gear. Um, if you guys show up and you're local, like John said, and you want to show up to the, to the, to the service, please wear your Reaper t-shirts. Um, and, uh, you know, if you can't, yeah. Um, wear if, your shirts on Saturday. Yeah. It's Saturday. If you guys want to post, you can tell me. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to post on any of our socials, just tag us. Um, I think the, the hashtag that I think was, sounds good to us is fearless leader. Hashtag fearless leader. Sh- hashtag uh, fearless leader. Post a picture of you guys uh, wearing your favorite shirt, painting your favorite Reaper mini, something like that. And hashtag fearless, fearless mm-hmm. leader. Hashtag Ed Pew, you know, yeah. at Reaper miniatures. And uh, the other thing, if, if you don't have any Reaper swag, any Reaper gear, um, you can go to tpublic.com, uh, go to the Reaper store. I'm sure there's a shortcut. Or Exclamation a, point merch. There we go. And what we're going to do for the rest of the month is uh, all the money, the, 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 we get the, the royalties from this. We're going to donate these royalties to the, Dave, Highland, no, Flower Mound? F- Flower Mound Animal Shelter. At Flower Mound Animal Ed, Shelter. Yeah. Uh, Ed, Ed really loved animals, and so instead of sending flowers, uh, we're requesting that you just make a donation to your favorite animal shelter because yeah. they need it. That's right. Um, also, uh, Reaper Harley wanted me to mention that the service will actually be streaming. Um, oh. You go to the uh, w- uh, the funeral home, Greenwood Funeral Home, and then look for Ed. And then uh, at starting at noon, they will start sc- streaming it. And they said it would stay up for like 90 days. So if you can't make it but you want to watch it, there's that. Okay, that's, go. that's good. I'll, I'll post that on We'll get the we'll, John socials. will get that information. Yeah. We'll post it on social. So, but yeah, so we will. We'll, like I said, we'll donate the money to from the shirts uh, for the next rest of the month to the animal shelter, the Flower Mound Animal Shelter. Um, yeah, like Dave said, they need the. They always need the money. They're always doing good things. Someone had mentioned uh, rock music. Going, uh, no, uh, we're not. There's not any rock music, Ed. But Ed was very <laughs> much uh, the eternal optimist, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Right? Uh-huh. And yeah, there yeah. were two songs that he and I had always <laughs> talked about that had to be played, and one of them was Louis Armstrong. It's a wonderful life. And uh, uh, always look on the bright side of life by Monty Python. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And those are so appropriate. Those are very appropriate songs. And um, I'll never be able to listen to to the Louis Armstrong again without thinking of Ed. So Mm. um, 
yeah, that like I said, that's that's uh, Ed's optimism coming through. So um, it's a great song to begin with. Your corpore, you're right. The song makes you cry all the time. Yep. Uh, yeah, and I, I'm going to laugh about when I hear the uh, Bright Side of Life by Monty Python. So yeah, good songs, good songs. Well, um, so Justin has been working over the last couple of weeks on a special tribute um, uh, here on, from the things we've had on uh, the, the shows we've had on Twitch over the last four years is what he said. Four years. Well, yeah. So what it is is the biggest chunk of it is from from the funniest bits are from the uh, blooper thing we did from four years ago, and it's what I would consider probably like maybe the golden era of Reaper Live. Not that the <laughs> now isn't bad. I'm not going to say it's bad now, but it's it's the upstairs recorded absolute amateur 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 type stuff. Yeah, and it is hilarious. It's uh, you know, it's great. Yeah, so I went back ending, and, uh, the ending is really good. I went back yeah. and watched uh, Reaper Live episode one when it was not so live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it was a good episode. It was. I actually pulled the intro from that one. Yeah. Years at the beginning of this, Dave. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those were four years ago. Dang, we've been at this yeah. for a long time. Yeah, October twelfth, twenty eighteen, Ron. Damn. You know, you know the hilarity Don't, oh is. Oh my gosh! Seriously. Okay. The hilarity is within eight to twelve episodes, we were saying hashtag not professional. <laughs> uh, <laughs> didn't take long, did it? it <clears throat> didn't did take not. long. It was great. That was probably the first hashtag that y'all made. <laughs> it probably was. Because yeah. uh, uh, well, so uh, I think we're gonna watch this, and I think uh, that'll I think be the end. That's gonna be the end of the show. That's gonna be yeah. So we so appreciate anybody, you guys coming out. Anybody want to say anything before we uh, show the video? Um, uh, I feel like if I say anymore, I'm gonna start crying. So. Yeah, uh, Ed loved you all, and uh... he did. He did. He yep. He would always talk about Reaper Live. He's like, oh, "We yeah. got to do this for Reaper Live." Yeah, he do loved this. doing the show. <laughs> Reaper Live exists because of Ed. Yep. I mean, I don't want to take anything from Dave, but it really, 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 it was his thing. Um, and he he grabbed me downstairs to do it, and and here we are, four years later. We've you know, you guys that loved hanging out with us on Thursday nights. Um, that's going to continue, of course. Like, don't he would want it to? So Absolutely. We're not doing anything. Yeah, we're not doing anything with it. Um, but you know, this is Ed's legacy. The whole thing, uh, yeah. it's what it's uh, it's what Ed wanted. It's what Dave wants. It's what we all want. So we are going to continue Reaper Live, and Reaper will continue. And just like he in the past, he's an innovator. So you know, he's always coming up with new things. You know, yep, Reaper yep. Bones, all that stuff that changed everything. So, so um, all right. So uh, if before yeah. we roll the th this thing, uh, <clears throat> just again, good night. We'll see you guys. Um, Next Thursday, I guess. Yeah, yeah. well, they're, all the normal shows are still going on. I think. Yeah, for sure. They are, yeah, I believe yeah. there will be a Reaper Land tomorrow. Uh, you know, and still streaming every morning. Yep. So. Yep. And we we should be back here next Thursday. I believe. I don't see why we wouldn't. But uh, it, we'll if something does change, we'll let you guys know. But for now, um, Ed, we love you. We miss you, and we will see you some sunny day. So um, y'all take care. Have a good night, and we'll uh, you guys stick around for this. Justin's put this together. Have a great night, guys. Gaming and geek culture, all for your viewing pleasure. Hi, this week on Reaper Live, we have a special guest. Honey Boo Boo. Oh, mm, no, no, no. Bobby Not Jackson. Bobby Jackson. Hall of Fame sculptor, Bobby Jackson. And gold medal painter. Or, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Say hi, Bobby. Wave this for you. Hi, Bobby. Hey, yeah. what is what is what is this on the table in front of us? Is this it's a circus peanut? <laughs> That's I've all been mine perfect. Is. I've been on, I've on been, point. I've all only messed day. up one time too. You've only one messed up mistake. one time as well. Come on. All right. All right. All right. All right. Are you right. doing outtakes? Hi, I'm Ron Hawkins. From okay. Alpha Centauri. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this does take forever. I know. Yeah, I, I know. know. Hi, welcome to this week's episode of Reaper Live. <laughs> it's already. You guys. You, <laughs> <laughs> it just. I don't know how bad it's going to do with those two together. It's just. He's a serious look on his face. I'm sorry. Hi, this week's episode. <laughs> just don't look at him. It only encourages him. Hi, welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I won't say anything. I'm Ron, he's Ed, y'all are them. Welcome to Reaper Live, geeks and gaming. Oh, it sucked that bad he couldn't stop us in the middle. You guys were all stomping all over each other. Well, well, well. Box time, <laughs> Whatever box you want to do. time to draw on box time. Yeah, that's it, we need a yeah. stupid little song. Box time, box Jingle. time.
Let's draw in boxes. It's working. That was stupid. And Don't. you're already recording, so I can just start, okay. right? Yeah. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Hold on, hold on. I got some sound back here. Tell Michelle. That's, that's who that was. Tell Michelle whatever so he tells you. You're Adrian. a rock star. You can't be bothered. Yeah. yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Right. We're, okay. we're just like Adrian's not at the door this? going wrong. We this need to go. Kind of fun. Fuck me. I just um, come in and not just fly in and do videos. Let <laughs> <laughs> me take you up on that. Yeah, I like to do that. Oh, this is fun. All right. Where are we going for lunch? So make sure to keep up with us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's time to let these minis dry. So if you want to keep up with this, please check out www.reapermini.com. Oh, you start from the beginning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought you'd pick it up. Go ahead. I did. This, this is the most fun. <laughs> no. Yes, it is. This is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Poor Gene is going into prophylactic shock downstairs, or whatever it's called. <laughs> Not prophylactic <laughs> shock. Gene Pro is... Prophylactic shock. <laughs> 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 Jean's, Jean's anaphylactic shock. Anaphylactic shock. He'll do great. He'll do great. <laughs> He'll do great. It's time to let these minis dry. Make sure to keep up with us on www.reapermini.com. <laughs> YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the social medias. Get there, like us, have fun, don't care. Bye. <laughs> if you want to see more of Michael Proctor's work, you can go to facebook.com slash Clever Crow Studios. Yes, Clever Crow Studios. Speed it up. Ed, stop. Um, <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> see ya. See ya. <laughs> and if you want to see more of Michael's work, Michael, where do we go? Facebook, Clever Crew, Clever... <sighs> Clever Crow. <laughs> He's a clever scholar. We could have used that. Uh, just, uh, slash Illustrator. Here we go. All right. Yeah, let's just okay, do it go. again. All right. One, two, three, go. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let these minis dry. If you want to keep up with us, please check out www.reapermini.com. YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Get there, have fun. Whatever. These are dry. If you, if you want to check out more of Michael's work, Michael, where do we go look at your show? Facebook, stuff? Clever Crow Studios. All right. Yeah. Check it out. All right. Well, again, thanks. thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Good job, guys. That was real good. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Don't they see this? Yeah, they definitely. Bob's do. related to one of the popes. I'm not related to one of the popes. And, it's, and Rodolfi means I'm a part werewolf. No, Rodolfi goes back to the founding of Rome. It means son of the great wolf. Son of a what? Okay, that's all right, Proctor. Hi, Ron. Me. How are you doing, me, Justin? Yeah, I guess you'll say, well, thanks for letting us come up and you know, that kind of crap, right? I yeah. can do that. Go ahead. Hi, welcome to the Reaper Live Christmas special. Okay, start over. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Gen Con, what were you doing watching me sleep? I wasn't watching you. But maybe before we close up, maybe we should ask you the uh, how you're related to the Pope and how you were, your last name I, means I'm, I'm a werewolf. I'm not related to the Pope. You get that wrong every this time. Is Bye. Wait, <laughs> from. Hi, welcome to Reaper Live. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Reaper Live. Wait, that seems awkward. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Reaper Live. And this week we have the awesome Gene Van Horn as our guest. Hi there. Thank you. I didn't say it yet. You didn't say anything. <laughs> He's so angry. Hi, I'm Ron Hawkins, art director here at Reaper. I'm Ed Pugh, president here at Reaper. I'm Gene Van Horn, sculptor. <laughs> at Reaper. At Reaper. Yeah, good. He knows where he is. I forgot what's doing. <laughs> okay. Make sure to stay up with all the latest news and then. Make sure to stay up, up with all the. Keep up. Yep. Keep up. That's what right. she said. Hi, welcome to Reaper Live. And this week we have Rhonda Bender as our special guest. Hi. Tonight, Reaper Live. And on a serious note, these two guys are going to tell us about what happened with bacon at the emergency room. I can't wait. Tune in. You ready? I'm about to go. We're ready to go. We're waiting on you, Rhonda. Okay. Ready? Yes. Okay. Hi, this week on Reaper Live, we have a special guest. That's my one. Here we go. Every time, every <laughs> Sorry. stinking time. Sorry. Hi, this week on Reaper Live, we have a special guest. Rhonda Bender. Hi. This week? Oh, that's stupid. That, that was <laughs> that's really retarded. Her Is this the hardest part for you? This in the end. Okay. <sighs> yeah. They get shot over and over. Okay. <laughs> okay, all right. Ready? Sure. Four. Do I, where am I supposed to put my hands? Anywhere you want. Anywhere you want, Anywhere you want to. You, want. you can keep doing that if you want to. <laughs> and then at some point, then I'll go in and dramatically ask you how you got into this hobby. Dramatically, okay. Really. okay. You'll sort of know Me, what it happened. It's, okay. it's a long story. It's not the, dramatic the, in any way. And then the pink face is what you look at when you're talking.
Look at pink. I've face. been told that some people look at the pink face. <laughs> I, 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 you should be one of those, Rhonda. <laughs> I, I was attempting to look at the pink face already. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Although it is a little creepy. You ready? You can back Ed. Just a talk a lot. It's a lot of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, every day is Halloween here. Oh my goodness! Here we go. I got two of them now. <laughs> All your social media, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, you know. Whatever. Twitch, stuff like that. Whatever. Just Let's get start there. over. Just start right. over. Okay. No, no, I totally botched there. it up. I totally botched it up. <laughs> I know, I know your tagline. I know. Read this, read that. I know. <laughs> well, you try not to read it, but yeah, I'm listening to Ron because it's okay. entertaining. All right. Hi, I'm Ron Hawkins. I'm Ed Pugh from Reaper Miniatures, president. <laughs> whatever. This is, why it takes, this is why it takes No, because he yeah, messed up. Here, you didn't do your role. Then, yeah, okay, all right. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Every time, Ron, all right, all right, all right. Ready? Three, two, one. Uh, make sure to keep up with all the latest news and goings on at Reaper Miniatures. With... Make sure to keep... What? Nothing. Not a thing. Make sure. All right, here we go. Hi, this week on Reaper Live, we're going to show some more Bones Black preview models. We're also going to debate who needs a Brazilian butt lift around here. We are. Okay. Gee oh. We forgot the big guy. Hey, all right, Come all on, right, let's go. Right, let's get here, him out go there. Go ahead, put him up there. Funk. Blam. There we go. Slam. It's Moomlack. Moomlack. Bones Black, Moon Bones Black. Black. This is the this is one of the big ones. He's not even the biggest, but he's just he's big. He's pretty big. Yeah. I don't know how tall he is. He's just big. Eight or nine inches at yeah. least. You ready? Gotta wave goodbye again. <laughs> <laughs> he hates that. Well, I knew it's fine exactly where he was at. Okay. The whole time. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's fine. It'll be fine. It will be fine. I'll leave that rolling for... All right, one more time. Hi, I'm Ron Hawkins, art director here at Reaper Miniatures. Ed P. President. And we're joined again with Bobby Jackson. Uh, also, Justin Elliott, our technical technical director. Uh, Michael Collins, our producer. Boy, I just effed that up. Let's start over. You should, how do you say this? A gold medal painter? Because I want to say gold medal. Gold, gold medal winning. I'll do gold that. Medal like, gold medal winning. Gold medal winning. I was going to say pa, the flower. Gold medal flower. Gold medal winning right. painter. He's a Hall of Fame yeah. sculptor and a gold medal winning painter. Gold medal winning painter. Okay, whatever. Okay. So, I'd, yeah. Go. And Honey Boo Boo Lookalike. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I started with that this morning. That's Go fine. Ahead. It works. Hi, this week on Reaper Live, we have a special guest. Honey Boo Boo. No, oh, no, no. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Go again. Yeah. Hi, this week on Reaper. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens for three hours. That's good week. fun. Hi, I'm Ron Hawkins, art director here at Reaper Miniatures. Ed? What do you do, Ed? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. There. Okay. Here okay. we go. Okay. Gaming, painting, sheet culture. Sucks for you guys. Let's start over. <laughs> Let, uh, we're, no. We're ro fine. Let's just roll. Okay. This, this is the last time. Third time to try. This is fantastic. <laughs> it's got an eye appointment. We gotta get yeah, we got to get it. Hey, I'll, okay. I'll go down and we come back and finish it. Okay. This is all good. Okay. Hi, I'm Ron Hawkins. At Reaper, and this, I'm Ed Pugh, president here at Reaper. And we have Bobby Jackson. Hi. <laughs> at Reaper. At Reaper. <laughs> How do you make chain mail? How do you make hair? It's called timing, timing, timing. You speed yeah. your timing up a little bit. Or slow it down. Or slow it down. I can go, honey, boo, boo. <laughs> Stop it. Okay. What's wrong here with we you? Go. <laughs> here we go. Take 32. Thanks for um, Don't forget questions. Reaper Live at yeah, ReaperMini.com. Yeah, 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 That's yeah, the yeah, part Ron yeah, just yeah, flubbed. Yeah, yeah, oh, you're going to lose your trailer. Squeeze it out, Ron. Yeah, got it. And remember, if you have any questions, send them to questions at. No, at ReaperLive at ReaperMini.com. Not God either, okay? Oh, my Lord. Okay. Make sure to follow us. <laughs> He's not a professional. <laughs> <laughs> That's our slogan, by the way. <laughs> Make sure to follow us on www.reapermini.com. YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Facegram. Facegram. <laughs> <laughs> Facegram, that's the new one. He's not a professional either. Now, what I found was, is I'm going in, and I'm just going to hit these areas the first time really light. It's just going to be like I can see it. And I mean, that looks like ass, even up close. But there you go. <laughs> Have fun. Stay safe.
Jazz hands. Jazz hands. <laughs>